My name is Blake Moore, natural resources and horticulture agent. Hey, I'm Dan Severson, ag agent. I'm Jake Jones, Kent County ag agent. And I'm Katie Young, digital content specialist. Welcome to Extension 302. Welcome back to Extension 302. I'm Katie Young, and I am here today to interview our host team. And, uh, you know, we've heard from them a whole lot this year, and I want to make them answer the questions this time around. So how are you guys doing today? Good, Miss Katie. How are you? Welcome to our, I guess it's our holiday final edition for 2020. Yes, it's our, our wrap up of 2020. Um, and I, I actually wanted to get started with you guys with an icebreaker because Dan, your icebreakers are iconic. Um, <laughs> if you had your own late night talk show, who would you invite as your first guest? That's a good one. I like That's that one. Very good one. And and I think the the iconic Dan Severson should uh, be the first to answer as well. That that's deep. You could go so many ways with this question. So what would your what would your deep answer be, and what would your shallow answer be? Um, you know, I, I would probably like to interview my grandma, my nana. I think that's that nice. would be I because just from the ag perspective of what she grew up with, because she was born in like twenty five, and you know they went from like, you know, by hand and horses, mules to tractors to you know now tractors that drive themselves. Um, I guess from a professional standpoint, you know, I would probably be like David Letterman just so I can learn how to, to do interviews uh, better. So, you, so you'd invite somebody um, on your interview show to learn how to do more interviews? To do them better. I like that. I think that's very cool. I really like the one about your grandmother. That's really, one is really sweet and two, I mean, she sounds like she's lived through a lot. Yeah, good woman. Blake, what about you? You were throwing Dan under the bus, so. Yeah, I care I, now. <laughs> well, I spend quite a bit of time under the bus too. So, um, you know, honestly, it's there, there's quite a few people that come to mind, um, you know, but I'd probably look towards uh, maybe one of the, the naturalists that, that uh, history has recognized and especially some of the um, indigenous peoples. I don't have a, a specific one, but to, to, to talk to them about, you know, their relationship with the land and, and how we can, can better get back into that, that touch. Um, you know, because, you know, a lot of the mission that we're doing with the Delaware Master Naturals Program is kind of trying to do that, right? Get back and get back in touch with, with the environment and how we can coexist and, and make it a better place as far as, as uh, you know, how we interact with our natural world, because we haven't been doing a very good job of that. And, you know, who better than to, to, uh, hear from the folks who did it for, you know, thousands of years before we came in here and, and uh, changed things up. Very nice. What about well, you, Jake? Would, You're quiet over I there. Would, yeah, I'm always quiet. I would invite Finding Bigfoot, the TV show, and then have this whole production <laughs> and bring Blake out with his COVID beard. And that would be the top <laughs> show. It is really funny that you say that because I have a bit of trivia for you guys. Um, and, and, and I think that's a, a perfect segue. I want to hear what you guys think. Which bit of personal growth is most likely to take place in the new year? Um, a, Jake will add chicken paws to his diet. B, Dan will begin refrigerating his peanut butter in an attempt to avoid accidentally poisoning himself. Or C, after growing his beard for the entirety of 2020, Blake will accept his fate as a Yeti and begin roaming the woods throughout the state, occasionally being caught on a low quality camera and sparking a new search for the Yeti of Delaware. My answer is C. Yeah, I'm going with, I'm going with Blake going through the woods. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't see Jake eating um, chicken paws and yeah, my peanut butter snack going in the fridge. <laughs> You might yeah. be able to catch me on a, uh, some CCTV at the local watering hole too. So that's another way to catch the Yeti on camera. So earlier this year, unidentified seeds were being sent randomly to folks around the world from China. Um, these seeds were all different and there seemed to be no indication of a reason for the mailings. What was the most likely explanation? A, they were monolith seeds sent to grow large three-sided metallic monoliths to help guide UFOs to key landing sites. B, they were an elaborate ruse to mail something to random addresses and then post reviews for more specific items to make it seem as if a company has more sales. Or C, 
Magic beans, if planted, will sprout an enormous beanstalk and reach up into the clouds. I would like to say C, and I would like to climb that uh, mythical uh, beanstalk uh, to see what's going on up there. But yeah, I'll answer B. Yeah, I mean, I'd really, I really want C to happen. Uh, so I got to go with a B. So last question. In addition to the pandemic and the spotted lanternfly invasion, murder hornets made their way into the United States, and then we never heard about it again. So what happened? Is it A, they've disguised themselves as spotted lanternflies to avoid detection? B, American honeybees mounted a coordinated defense and waged war on the murder hornets? Or C, in October, officials in Washington state destroyed the first murder hornet nest in the country, and chances are that there are plenty more out there that we don't know about. Yeah, again, we have to go with C. I kept on, uh, I kept up on that pretty, pretty regularly, and and they did destroy the one. And here's the cool thing: is they actually took a murder hornet queen, and tied a tiny little, like radio transmitter on her, so she could take them back to the, to the nest. And that's how they found them and destroyed them. But you know, you never know. The the bees could have mounted to come back. We may, maybe just wait to see a Disney movie coming out about that here soon. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's jump into the real questions. How was your year? Jake, you had something important happen. Well, while I was stuck at home, I wrote a lot and finished my PhD. So that was probably my biggest accomplishment of 2020. So All right, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Definitely congratulations, Jake. Yeah. Thanks. It's Dr. Jones, I presume. There's supposed to be an Indiana Jones 5 coming out. You can make a, uh, a cameo in that. Yeah. <laughs> My, my graduation party was always going to be like Indiana Jones themed and now I can't have one. So yeah. 2020 was awesome until like middle of March and then it sucked. I don't I know what happened. A lot of us happened. can relate to that. <laughs> what happened in the know. middle of March, Dan? I have no idea and I, I still don't know and I'm still living in it. I'm not going to lie to you. There's a there's been at least a couple times where I'd have to turn to my wife and I'm sitting here and be like, is this really happening? Like, are we really living through this right now? Everything just changed on a dime. And like, we've just made it happen. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I've struggled mightily with 2020 as far as not being able to interact with, with other human beings, you know, without a computer screen in between us. Um, it's, it's especially difficult for a lot of us in extension. And you know, this, what we've been able to do in the face of that has just been pretty awesome stuff. You know, we can't just uh, ignore the fact that we've done some amazing things in, in spite of this. Yeah, I, I, I mean, personally and professionally, 2020, like this event has really knocked me back big time. Um, and, and if you work with me, you, you, you know, you'll be able to know the nuances of how I change. And, you know, it's just you don't know what's going to it's just weird that what's going on. So when we initially planned this podcast, we had built in about a month or so of pre-recorded programming to help us kind of hit the ground running um, when we did start releasing episodes. However, the outbreak of COVID-19 in the U.S. pushed our release uh, dates up. So our first episode was about coronavirus impacts on Delaware agriculture. So way back on April 8th, we released that first episode and you chatted with Dr. Um, Keeler, and Dr. Gordon Johnson, who's also from Extension, and Secretary Michael Skews from the Department of Agriculture. And at the time, we didn't know a whole lot about the virus. Um, we were discussing whether or not it could be spread through food, the food system, what the status was for H-2A workers, and how worker safety might be affected, as well as a concern about limited PPE within the ag industry. Can you guys talk a little bit about you know what you've seen since then yeah I, I mean i guess i'll go ahead and start um like our first episode i don't even know where we were at that time as far as like food in the grocery stores or you know people having to dump milk and stuff like that uh, i think we were more with that podcast we were more interested in learning more about the virus and how we can protect ourselves in our in our food system, in our, in our industry. Um, so that's where I was really focused on for that. And you said, April, I, I don't, like I said, the past nine months, if you ask me current events, I don't know any for the past nine months. Cause I don't, <laughs> it, it's all been a, it's like groundhog day. Every day is the same. 
Um, so, yeah, I'll leave that up to Jake and Blake. I agree with Dan. I think at that time we were still a little, you know, we didn't really know what was happening. I think we were talking about farmers, you know, leaving fields in Florida and stuff like that still. And then I think our food system eventually corrected itself. Grocery stores became, you know, stocked again, which is, I think they've, we've kind of adapted to this new normal, which I think Dan said he's going to punch <laughs> yeah. me if I said that. So I think, I think at that time we were still, you know, we were, we didn't expect it to last this long and, and the effects on the um, agriculture in general weren't really known yet. And so some of these, you know, coronavirus assistance programs were developed after this, once the picture became more clear. So I think we've got a lot of information since then. And we haven't really covered COVID that much because it's covered everywhere else right now. Yeah, I think we felt like if we kept covering COVID, we were going to become the um, COVID-19 podcast. And that wasn't our goal. For those of you that don't know, this podcast was actually the brainchild of, of Jake, our very own Jake Jones. Um, and it was something that we secured funding for through a cooperative extension. And we got funding for the podcast. And we really were looking forward to having a, a full year of having uh, guests come in our office. Obviously, we were um, all pushed online pretty quickly. Yeah, I think we were fortunate that we had that innovative two days and, you know, won the, the, the awards that we got for the money to do this and were kind of already in the planning stages before all this hit. Fortunately, we, we, were, we were already planning this, but unfortunately, we had to move a little bit faster. Yeah, so the the two day event back in February, which seems like forever ago, the Delaware the Delaware Innovation and Skill Building event put on by E Extension and and some of the folks from Delaware State University and UD Cooperative Extension, it was a, a great um, event. You know, we learned quite a bit in there. And like I said, Jake had the idea, and we were all Dan Dan comes up to me in Ag Week last year and says, "We're doing this. This is your idea," because he thought I came up with the idea, and I was like, "Uh, okay, we're gonna do this." <laughs> Um, and we're able to put this together. And, and like you said, just being able to adapt it and, and be ready to, to, to come online, you know, when we were, we were kind of forced to, I think it's good. And, you know, hopefully this is just the beginning of, of more stuff to come. It's yeah. funny you say that Blake, because I had a similar experience. I, um, I started an extension last October and I had never met Dan before. And he comes up to me at the, um, at Ag Week last year and shakes my hand and says, Hey, I, I'm, I'm Dan Severson. We need somebody technical to be behind the scenes. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. Could you imagine if we didn't have the technical assistance? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I got y'all involved. I, I got Jake and Blake mixed up because I didn't make that, um, that egg and service meeting. I don't know if I was in Florida or, or Vegas for, for training. So yeah, that was all my fault. Sorry guys. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad Dan got it mixed up because then he got everybody on the whole team involved. And so the, the project moved forward at a good time. So I'm, I'm happy with it. And I had a lot of fun this year. I don't know if you guys remember way back in episode nine, um, we talked to Ed Usset, who is the grain marketing economist for the Center for Farm Financial Management at the University of Minnesota. Um, and he talked to us about five grain marketing mistakes to avoid. In that episode, he mentioned commoditychallenge.com, which is an online game where you can play as a grain producer um, and get some market practice. Have you guys given that a shot? Personally, I have not. I did uh, go onto that website and check it out and look how you could um, create a team. and. So just say if we create a team for Delaware, we, you know, reach out to Dr. Usset and he creates whatever he does in that program and you can create a team and stuff like that. But uh, I haven't pursued it any further. And I, I think we talked the other day and I was, you know, me, you and Jake, and I was like, you know, we should probably look into that and see if we could get drum up some business or something for that. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as Dan. I went to the website. Um, and there are some games you can just join, uh, you know, for different states and everything. But if we get enough interest, Dan, and I mean, all of us would be happy to put together a, a group for Delaware. Yeah. So if they're listening and if you're interested, shoot us an email. Uh, Katie has our contact info so we can see what we can do. Yeah, we'll put our contact information um, in the description for the podcast, um, but also on our website if you guys are interested in joining a team. Yeah, I wouldn't mind posting um the challenge URL, if anybody wants to join another one, another team that's already created as well, uh, just to give them an experience. 
Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to go online um, now, it is, it's commoditychallenge.com. Um, again, we'll put the link in the description for you. More recently, in episode 10, we talked about managing nutrients and improving water quality with um, UD Extension's own nutrient management team. And from what I understand, you guys have some updates on the status of nutrient application in Delaware? Yeah, so part of the nutrient management regulations in Delaware is, is aimed at preventing uh, nutrient loss, especially during a time of year when, when the nutrients aren't, aren't as needed. Um, so there is a moratorium on uh, fertilizer application, nutrient application, uh, from December 7th to February 15th of each year. And also uh, make note not to apply to frozen ground or snow-covered ground. So Katie, do you want to mention the email list that you're going to start? Because I talked to the nutrient management team and with all these virtual meetings, they said that next year we can certainly start to offer nutrient management credits for listening to the podcast and completing like a small quiz afterwards. So, Oh, absolutely. Um, starting now and into next year, we are launching a new extension 302 mailing list. Um, and that's just a way for you to sign up to receive uh, future episodes of extension 302 direct to your email inbox. We'll include links to the different versions of the podcast, whether you like to listen on YouTube or whether you prefer to listen on something like Spotify. Um, and you can expect one to two emails per month with the latest episode. And then we'll also send you some additional resources in that email that we think that you would enjoy. Um, so to sign up for that, visit us online at udell.edu slash extension slash podcast and sign up for our mailing list. So beginning in 2021, once we have relevant topics on nutrient management, you probably offer like a half credit because our podcasts usually run about a half hour long. We will start to offer those credits um, once they're approved by DDA and UD's nutrient management team. Yeah. So as soon as that's available, we'll be um, advertising that and pushing it out. We'll definitely mention it on the podcast. It'll be on the UD extension website um, and a few other places. So um, that's not happening yet, but it is something to look forward to next year. If you guys could have picked a topic that we could have covered this year, if we had been able to, what other stuff would you have liked to thrown in? Well, I think from the beginning, I said, uh, well, when Delaware State Fair uh, concerts were released and they had Hank Williams Jr. coming, I, I had that on my calendar. That was going to be our first live podcast. <laughs> and I yes. was going to enter, we were going to interview Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what ag we would have got out of that, but that, that, that was the one I wanted. Yeah, I mean, for me, it would, it would certainly be talking about the Delaware Master Naturalist program that we have going on. Just, you know, being able to start a brand new program in an area that I am very passionate about would be something I'd love to talk about and something hopefully we can talk about in 2021. All right. Um, obviously, with everything going on, a lot of events are being done differently for the foreseeable future, and that includes Ag Week for 2021. Do you guys want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, Ag Week is still going to happen. Again, it's going to be virtual, um, but it's more or less it's going to be Delaware Ag Month. There's a website at University of Delaware for Ag Week. You can go to and click on the sessions. Some of them will be streamed live. Some of them will be recorded, and you could uh, watch them at your own own pace. Uh, some have nutrient management credits. Again, like we mentioned, uh, you will have to take a quiz, a short little quiz at the end to uh, verify that you paid attention and, and you get your credits. And uh, But, yeah, no, I think – well, one of the programs I'm involved in will start the beginning of January, and I think we end like February 2nd. So we'll fall a little bit into February. Yeah, as, as part of uh, Delaware Ag Week, we always have a woodland management session, and we're going to do the same this year. It'll be January 11th um, from 1 to 3. And uh, we're going to look for talking about natural and working lands and how uh, the small um, small tract forest landowners um, can do, do different with their property in order to, to help with uh, you know, either climate change and, and may, might actually be able to make some money off of uh, having a better, a better forest on your, on your property. I'll add that if you go to the Delaware Ag Week website, you can actually start to register for these events um, right now. So you can get them added to your calendar. And um, yeah, and a lot of the schedule is up there already. 
with topics. So, and just to um, give you that URL, it is sites.udel.edu slash Delaware Ag Week. Again, we'll have the link in the description. Yeah, and with COVID going on, you know, we were able to get some speakers that we would not normally be able to get uh, because of travel restrictions. Everybody's zooming, so we could uh, we can get people that we would not normally be able to reach out to or get. Uh, we still want to thank our sponsors and and supporters that have been with us, and uh, you know, hopefully, we get to do this live in uh, 2022. All right. Do you guys have any announcements, anything that you want to add? All right. Well, we're going to wrap up this last final podcast of 2020. I would just like to reach out and thank uh, all of our listeners out there that listen to us. I would like to say thank you to the extension and the innovation team that, uh, you know, listened to our pitch and gave us our financial awards to get this out there. Uh, I'm thankful for, you know, our extension team and the team that I work with, um, not just in the ag team or not just the podcast, but, you know, everybody. Um, it seems to have been behind everybody, have everybody's back during this time because we were all struggling somehow, some way, whether we knew it or not. But we had support there. So I, I just want to say thank God for everybody today. Yeah, I'd like to thank the listeners and we're going to be in touch more. So we're going to have more episodes and we're going to have that email list. So hopefully we can start getting some feedback and talking, you know, you guys can have a say in what we, what we're covering. And I'd like to thank Dan and everybody else on the team, but Dan's the one who really pushed us to start. And then also all the <laughs> guests, all the guest speakers too, because I don't think anyone oh, turned yes. us down. So that was, that was good. Yeah. I'd like to thank, uh, you know, each of you, Jake, Dan, Katie, for being part of a great team. Um, we'd also like to thank Dean Rieger and Dr. Michelle Rogers for their financial support in funding this idea that was uh, something something that we were really excited about and something that we rolled out early and wouldn't have been able to do without that, that funding. And thank you to all the listeners. You know, you guys, you guys make it worth it. Uh, I hope to interact with you a little bit more uh, in the coming year. And, you know, hopefully, like I said, we can come on site and do some more interviews with some folks and, uh, you know, like Dan said, not have a new normal. Go back to the old normal. This podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by both guests and hosts are their own, and their appearance on this program does not imply endorsement by the University of Delaware or UD Cooperative Extension. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode and we'll come back for more. In the meantime, please subscribe, visit us online at udel.edu slash extension, and join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at UD Extension. This program is brought to you by the University of Delaware Cooperative Extension, a service of the UD College of Agriculture and Natural Resources, a land-grant institution. This institution is an equal opportunity provider.